everyone. My name is Tanya Smith. I'm an English teacher on the LAC2 team uh, preparing the kids for the Keystones in the English department and I want to thank you for welcoming me into your meeting today. Uh, when I spoke to Mike last week about possibly sharing ideas about how you can integrate our writing techniques and tools into your own classrooms, I thought it was just fabulous uh, to hear that you all were interested in doing that because I think we share a lot of kids. So this is really going to be a seamless process for you all to integrate into your own classrooms. Um, I know that in my classes, I always teach the history or the historical setting that goes along with the literature because it's completely necessary for understanding. So I think you'll, again, find it a seamless integration to, you know, use writing skills to convey ideas in history. So. Hopefully, right? Fingers crossed. Um, but I want to start today just by going over racers with you. Racers is the technique that we use to teach the kids writing. And I know that in other departments, it tends to feel overwhelming to have to do writing with the students. There's just a whole virtual cornucopia of issues that you run into from participation to, um, you know, not doing it well and not caring, not not handing in quality work because some of the kids just truly don't care. And I'm not saying that this eradicates that problem, but the kids are exposed to racers in our class. It's a really easy technique. So I think you're going to find the kids are more willing to do it in your class. And that lack of, of engagement, lack of motivation should be squashed at least to some degree. They're not going to completely vapor lack when you say constructed response to them because most of your students should really have been exposed to this already. So again, the technique that we use is racers. It's really not difficult at all and that's hopefully what I'll convey to you all through this presentation. And I hope you don't mind. I, I'm modifying this from one that I did for my students. I do videos for my students. I flip my classroom. so. The, the, the pig in the car. I hope you get a good laugh out of it. Zoom, zoom. So, <laughs> racers. Um, basically, what we do with the kids is we use a form called racers. And I'm going to show you at the end of this presentation the form that I use that is super simple. And really, I mean, the kids are, are on their own with their writing. And it's easy to follow. And you're really doing very little guiding unless a student doesn't understand what they read. Racers it really helps the kids to be self-sufficient. Racers is basically a chart as you'll see up here on the screen. And the RACERS -E all stand for something. So the first sentence restates the question and gives your answer to it, that's your RA. And you'll see on the left side here, obviously, that we have a column for the kids to do this. The C stands for citations. Um, I refer to it as textual support. I don't know if other teachers do that. That's just kind of my thing. Um, but they, it, the C is citation, which is the same thing as textual support. And that's where the kids would provide evidence from the text to support whatever it is they're saying. Uh, the E stands for explain. You have to explain how that textual support relates to your answer. And then the R down here gets a little tricky because it's a repeat C and E. So um, again, your kids that are new to this might have a little, they might stumble a little bit, but it's easy enough to explain to them. The R is repeat C, E, so you cite, explain, and then just cite, explain again. Um, this gets a little tricky if you have a two-part question, but you can really limit at whatever you give the kids to a one part question so that you don't have to deal with that re-answer and then repeat CA and I highly recommend that you, you avoid that completely. <laughs> it's not worth the hassle. Um, so really it's just a repeat C and E. And then S is the final sentence and it signals to the reader that you're finished. I tell my kids it's their shoe sentence. Go away reader. I'm done writing. So that's racers right there and the kids actually get this in a Microsoft Word document so that they can type on it and they absolutely love it. Um, I taught color coding at the beginning of the year, a color coded writing guide before I went to racers and a lot of them still color code. They just love doing graphic organizers anywhere where they can separate their thoughts instead of just Bleh, spitting a bunch of stuff out into one big paragraph. They really like the opportunity to use this. 
and there's the pig. So that's racers in a nutshell. So how does this work, especially for history? What would they respond to? My idea would be that they would respond to historical fiction or historical nonfiction genres. And th there's a plethora of options in both of those genres. I actually chose one of it today. And I would gladly help you to, to compile the resources that you need. So if you look at what I chose here, and this is actually a very small part of the story, um, Bang, bang, pow, those sounds stick in my mind like glue. Those sounds were the last sounds I heard before my mother was killed. Right off the bat, we, we understand where this plot is going. She explains a little bit more about herself, and you see here that there's a reference to Mr. Hitler, which right away indicates to us what time period we're talking about. And again, there are several other references in here to the time period, which is really what's important about historical fiction and historical nonfiction. And for your needs, the easiest thing for your kids to write about just to get them writing. So a question that you might ask them is, what is the historical setting and why is it an important element in the story? Well, we see right here, the kids' eyes would go directly to Mr. Hitler, and it would go directly to the Star of David, and down here to the Jew references to their Jewish religion. Um, and the kids would know right away, okay, this is clearly um, Holocaust. So that question, what is the historical setting, and why is it an important element in the story, really sounds like, wow, I don't really know that my students are going to be able to answer that. That seems like a lot. They can. They've been getting questions on the LAC2 team that are far more difficult than this, far more analytical than this. So I know that y'all probably read that and you said, oh my gosh, this woman is crazy. I'm not crazy. The students that you share with your LAC2, with the LAC2 team will be able to do this and answer questions of this caliber. So when we go on to our racers writing guide, thinking about what we just saw that, you just said, you know, the kids would then use the guide and it would look something like this. The historical time period is the Holocaust and this setting is an important element in history. So they restated and answered the question. The C is citation. It is told to us in the text that Mr. Leitner is Mr. Hitler's right hand man. So this is the first indication to the reader that this is written during the Holocaust. So, uh, Holocaust. so there is their quote, their citation, and they have to explain that. This is significant to the story because the stray zoog belongs to Mr. Leitner and will create conflict for the Jewish main character and her mother. Again, I didn't read that whole story with you or even what was there, but the, the women, the, the narrator and her mother find a stray dog. It is set during the Holocaust, and the dog belongs to Mr. Leitner, who is Mr. Hitler's right-hand man. So the narrator also states down here in the repeat C&E and e, that Mr. Leitner despised anyone and everyone that affiliated with or was Jewish. And she further describes her mother. Her and her mother is wearing the Star of David. Again, this indicates to the reader that the historical time period, the Holocaust, is significant because Mr. Leitner will likely punish the mother severely based on his hatred of her religious affiliation. So the kids draw connections there. For these reasons, the reader understands that the historical setting is significant and will be directly related to the death of the narrator's mother. And I apologize. I think that part is cut off because my video is in the way and I forgot to stop it right there. I like to personalize everything. I'm sorry about that. So... There it is in a nutshell. There are a C E R S quotes from the text and explanations for them and all are organized in a way that's really manageable for the students. And again, I promise you, your students can do this. Didn't want to change for a second there. Sorry about that. So then you bring it all together. And when the kids are done with their writing guide, their goal is to put it into a paragraph. And it doesn't look like this in the guide, but this is the quality of writing that's being handed in using that racer's writing guide. And isn't this so much nicer than <laughs> would you all probably receive that one or two sentence response where you just want to pull your hair out like nobody functions like that in the real world. Well, this is what I'm getting from the kids. And they're really starting to understand the quality of a good, of, of um, I'm sorry, the, the necessity of a good quality response, especially since they're going to be taking the keystones and this is what's going to be required of them. And again, on the flip side, it it's nice for all of you to actually receive something from the students that's worth reading and doesn't make you want to pull your hair out. So this is where the kids wind up winds up after the racers writing guide. So all the tools you need in order to write with your students and to assign these things on even a weekly basis. Personally, um, I do a flipped classroom. So I, I do videos 
the kids watch a video from me. They're always five to seven minutes. They take a pre-quiz on the concepts in the video, and then whatever their pre-quiz score, score is, if it's 80% or above, they do an um, extension activity, and if it's 79% or less, they work with me the following day on a remediation activity so that we can support those gaps and fill those gaps. So now, um, on those extension activities, whether they're ex well, whether they're extension or remediation activities, the kids are always writing for me again. So there are some weeks that my kids are doing up to three constructed responses for me using the racers writing guide, um, and they do them. I promise you, they do them. Not every kid hands them in on the day that they're due, but within a day or two, if as long as I'm reminding my students that they need to get them into me, they're doing these responses because they've become easy for the students. The students, I'm not lying to you, they cheer when I say it's a CR day because they know I'm going to give them an assignment or an extension day because they know they're going to get an assignment, they're going to write their CR, which now only takes them about 15 minutes and they earn their freedom for the day. So they're allowed to leave class early as long as their CR is done. So that's where my students are at. And if you share students with me, you're going to see the same type of success. So the rubric that I had just pointed out on the previous page, the tools that you'll need, I, I think I forgot to go over them, were the historical fiction and nonfiction documents, which I'll help you to get together, the Eraser's Writing Guide on a Microsoft Word document, which I have, and you also need the um, rubric, which is what I'm going to show you now, and then the revision document, which again makes this all a seamless opportunity for the students to write and revise and you really never have to go over anything with the students it's all an automated process the writing rubric i developed is is automated for you as well the only thing the students the only scores the students can get on this are 0 10 20 or 30 there's no in between if a student isn't scoring a 30 advanced they're revising there is no oh he almost got it good job move on there's none of that and um at our level and again, I don't know if every teacher does this because some have a softer spot than I do. I kind of I want my kids to do this and do it right. And I'm kind of a stickler for it. And I, I think there are quite a few other teachers who have adopted that same kind of stickler personality. If you're not getting an advance on these by now, then you're revising it, you know. So um, the, the automated form that I developed is the only thing you have to enter is either a 10 or a zero, and that's it, and you see it up here. Um, but I do have the actual Excel version of it that I wanted to share with you. So this is the actual um, rubric that we use to score the students, and you're gonna see that it is automated. Everything down here, um, you don't even need to use all these lower columns here and rows here. Everything you need is right here, and the only column that you ever need to touch is the B column. So if you enter a 10 right here, you're going to see that a bunch of things change. If you enter a 10 right here, you're going to see that all of this changes. The um, responses in column C, D, and E are dependent upon what score you give them in column B. So this will automatic tally. And these will change depending on what the student score. So you'll see if you give them a zero up here, this changes as well. And it tells the kids their next steps and everything. And it tells them exactly where they went wrong in here. So it's, it's really very easy stuff. Now, when I paste this onto a student's document, I simply highlight it. I copy it. And I can paste it directly into their revision feedback if they don't earn a a 30% on this, a perfect 30%. So that's all that are, there is that's involved in the scoring rubric. Now, the cool thing is, is that if a student scores a perfect score, all you have to do is return this, copy and paste it and return it through their Dropbox comment. But if a student scores less than that, there's a document that I use as well to return this to the students so that they can work on fixing it up. So this is what that document looks like here. Okay, so this is what I return to the students when they don't earn a perfect score. And again, it's all copying and pasting, and it's just the kids are guiding their own learning. They're regulating their own revisions. So um, this is step one for them. I paste their actual response right here, and then I paste their, their um 
their scoring rubric right underneath it right here. So I just copy it from the, the Excel sheet and I paste it right into this rubric here and I apologize for that. So the kids see exactly what they did wrong and exactly what they need to work on. As they go down, they're gonna see what step two is. And again, if you have a student in mind, they're very familiar with this document. I tell them exactly what to do. So they scroll down, they review the original passage and they use their racers writing guide to make the improvements that they need to make they type their final formal version here and they submit this to a revision drop box for me to regrade and uh, so that they can get their grade up to a 30. So that's, you know, some kids do, do get this revision and they do have to redo things, but more often than not, I'm receiving responses that are really up to par. This is a typical response from one of my students, an original response. So you'll see this is the document that they get in their Dropbox originally. So again, it walks them through the steps. Here's their prompt. Here's them, here's Shana using her writing guide. And then here's her final response. And again, this is a pretty common response for my students. This is what they're handing in to me. They're doing very, very well. And again, if they don't do this, if they didn't earn the 30 like Shana did, this is the rubric, this is what she earned, she got a 30, then I would return to them not the just their rubric score, I would return this document to them with their response and tell them to fix it up. So that brings us back to my original slides and that's really it for racers. Um, again, I'm sorry I couldn't be there live with you today. I'm sure that you have a million questions and I'm not there to answer them, but please know that I'm always available, except today <laughs> at nine o'clock. For some reason, it, my week just didn't work out for me, but I am always available. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm, I'll always make time to help you out with this if it's something that you're all interested in doing. And uh, if you can't make that decision based on what I showed you today, um, after the break, I can make myself available for a 9 a.m. and again, be live for any questions that you might have and hopefully work towards getting kind of a, um, a, a camaraderie between the history and English department uh, in terms of, of racers writing guide and getting our kids to kind of a universal good place in the writing process. So again, thanks for having me and please reach out to me if you have any questions at all.